Hey everyone, I wanted to come to you today to show you an update. If you have my build your own computer activity, the one that turns out like this, really cute. I added a cute little update. I'm calling it cute. It's really like I should have totally thought of it before, which is an emoji keyboard underneath the keyboard. Like how when you're on a smartphone or tablet or whatever, you can get the other type of keyboard. So I have all of this. Um, I cut some stuff out just to make the process a little bit quicker, uh, but I wanna show you everything that's included and put it together real quick. Um, starting with, I really have been having fun adding color to it with just plain piece of printer paper that's colored. This one happens to be um, Astro Brights their set that has like 50 different colors in it. I just grabbed one that I liked. Oh, sorry about the shrieking. Try not to bump into that. Too much coffee this morning. Um, all right, so this page that's normally the very back has a few different options. I cut out the one that has the pieces already added to it. This is great for your youngest students so that you don't have to waste time with them cutting it out, but you do fully have the option. This is uh, one of the cutout pages. So if you were to use this one, your students would cut these out. I love to have it color, have them color it too. And then place by size, like the biggest square goes with the biggest one. Um, and the picture examples are included in the download. So those are your options for that. I'm gonna glue this down try to stay organized for you here too but honestly what's learning without a little bit of mess right I usually glue one side at a time and then fold it just makes it a little easier I know we love purple glue and then right about that halfway mark doesn't have to be perfect, but we glue this down. So this is acting as, oh, sorry about the shaking again, the computer case and base. And I'm gonna fold this right at about that line so we can glue this side of it too. It's up to you, but if you're gonna have your students color it, they might wanna color first and then glue. I wasn't gonna make you watch me color today. <laughs> so here's our base. I'm gonna let that dry for just a moment. And I do have, I do a couple of things while we're waiting for each step of it to dry. So all they had to do was cut around there for this first one. But then the second one requires two cuts. So we have this and you have to cut out the keyboard and you have to cut out the uh, web browser window. So I already have these cut out and I chose the option where the keyboard is already filled in. Again, great for your little ones. If you wanna add more of a challenge, do the one where your students have to fill in the keys themselves. So I have the keyboard that I cut out. So I have my students cut out the base first and then glue it and then cut out the next pieces while it's drying. So this will end up glued onto there. They have to do the icons as well. And this ends up glued onto here. Now with the addition of the emoji keyboard, so cute, right? And this one prints two to a page, looks like this. All you do is cut the line in the middle and then you've got two um, just to save some paper. So this is going to be layered here like that. At the same time, students can cut out their desktop icons. So you've got two options for that. One is the quick method. I use this again with the littlest students because the less cutting, the better. Uh, but you've also got the full option where students can choose which icons they want to put on their screen and they're bigger. It, almost, it reminds me of like a Windows 10 computer or a tablet where um, they look like something to tap on, like an app to open. So have them cut out 
all of these like right around the same time while the rest of it is drying. So I'm gonna put my emoji keyboard on next and you just line up the um, empty boxes that I have there for you. So I'd have them do that next and glue on the desktop icons. These icons are not meant to be any real programs. You can just, whatever you want them to be, they can be. You can have students label them if you want. This is another opportunity to color it and have it turn out super cute. So that, and then the last step is putting on the keyboard and the browser window. I have my students color code the keyboard based on whatever it is that they've learned in class, like whether it's left hand, right hand, or home row keys, however you teach it, you can really customize this. They can color in the emojis too if they want, or just leave them black and white. It's totally up to you. And I have them fill in lots of options, depending on the grade level for the browser window. They can recreate their favorite website and make it colorful, or you can have like a list, have them list all of their approved sites. That's another great way to do it. Open-ended as far as that goes. While I'm waiting for the whole thing to dry, I do have, and this is one other um, addition that I've made. So we've always had the matching activity as an optional, but I went ahead and made a vocabulary. You could even put this up like as a poster in your classroom. It will um, get big easily. Obviously these are not all of the parts inside of the computer, but these are the ones that most computers have. So that's why I went with it. Uh, you could also do video cards, sound, all that. Um, and then I have the matching activity done two ways. One to save paper, so it's just a half sheet, and then one full sheet. So I usually have students, my older students at least, do these while they're waiting for their computer to fully dry. It makes it a great extension. So this is all of it without any color. And once it really dries, then you can kind of fold it nicely and turn it into this cute 3D thing. So you've got your browser window, you've got your computer desktop with your, the icons on it, a keyboard that you can color code your way. Fold this back. I would place a hard fold on that one so that students can get to it, the emoji keyboard easily. Fold this one back too. And then you've got the guts. That's what I like to call it, just because it freaks them out. Um, for that. Eric, I use this K through eight. Honestly, you can make it as easy or as hard as you want. Kindergarten level has um, even K1, 2. If you don't want to take the time to have them cut out these individually, you print it with it already um, done. Where's my other one here? So this is what it looks like for the harder level. Students have to place them themselves. The easiest possible way is to just print it already done and they just color it in. Same with the desktop icons. This is the easiest version. Or you can have them... Glad I printed out these extras. Um, color and cut out all of these icons and place them themselves. And then you can go as complicated as you want with having them maybe label the inside parts or learn about them as they go using the vocabulary sheet. And then you can, not yeah, so as simple as possible is just putting it together all the way up to the highest possible challenge, which is learning about each of these computer parts, learning about how web browsers work, and you can um, talk digital citizenship, like, okay, what websites are you allowed to use? You could have them list here. Um, talk about different types of desktops, like obviously a Chromebook looks totally different than um, a Windows computer or a tablet. So you can talk about how they set up desktops differently. You can uh, have the challenge of the matching activity, 
or with your youngest students, maybe do it together or just skip it all together. So many options with it, which is why I love it. And if you, <laughs> if you have a bunch of different colored papers, it can turn into the cutest hallway display you've ever seen. I did this one in orange and just by um, having them color in some of the keys or the back pieces, this one doesn't have the emoji keyboard, and color the icons, it turns into the cutest thing that they'll do all year and they will beg you to do it again the next year. And once one grade level does it and the other ones see it, like if you put it as a bulletin board or just have them drawing in your classroom, they'll all beg you to do it. So every year I do this with all my students and we just add on to the complexity the next time that they do it. That's a great question. So there you have build your own computer. And I do have multiple layouts. I didn't print them all. Multiple layout options for the keyboard. This kind of does show a difference. So this one has like the, the Chromebook versus like the Windows. And then there's one filled in and blank with the command key instead. So you've got all of your options for the keyboard layout. Um, and of course, blank if you just wanna make your own option. I love to take multiple weeks to do this if you've got the storage space. If not, pick the easiest one with everything already. And you can see by the length of this video, it probably took me an additional five minutes to cut the pieces um, so that I didn't have to do that for you and have the annoyance of that sound. Um, so like five minutes of cutting, cause you just cut around, there's like three things to cut. You cut the keyboard and the screen. That's two cuts. This is one cut cause it's just the whole outline. And then your choice, if you have them cut the um, icons or not, it's either these full icons and these ones. So if your older students can handle that, or it's just the little one. And these come like six to a page. So you could even cut them, I think six, four or six or something um, when you print it out. So you could even cut them ahead of time if you want to um, shorten that amount of time that it takes for your students. So you can stretch it out multiple weeks and make it like a really solid lesson about what's inside of a computer, or you can turn it into basically a craft activity and just have it turn out really cute. The amount of time that we've been here, this is pretty much dry with a glue stick now. Like I would, I would feel com confident letting students walk away with this now with how dry it is. And then if you wanna have them color, that adds time to it, but you could al always have them color the next time once it's nice and dry, or have them color the first session and just have uh, the papers, have them color and cut and then glue everything the next time. It really is very flexible and totally up to you how you end up doing it. Turns out really cute though, doesn't it? And now you've got this extra border so that they can put their name on it. Um, I do have them put their name on the outside too because if we store it folded up or something. It's easier. I don't want to have to open up every single one of them. But now you have the idea. So this is the build your own computer and tons of you already have it. So I was letting you know today that this emoji keyboard has been added to it. And I added an additional the page, page of the vocabulary. So you can turn that into um, a poster in your classroom or just display it to really talk about those computer parts. So if you own this already, go ahead and re-download it for this update. If you have any questions, let me know and I will answer them in the comments, but I'm done with this. So thanks for tuning in today and I hope that you enjoy the updates. Bye.